Thank you so very much. Um, the, um, the brief was to say how Durham County Council has gone about developing our climate change plan. Um, I'm going to go like a steam train, there's so much to tell you. <clears throat> it starts by telling you that it didn't start in 2019 with uh, Greta Thunberg and Extinction Rebellion. It began when the Unitary Authority was formed in 2009. We immediately joined the European Mayor's Covenant. And in the period 29 to 2017, six reports were brought to Cabinet on climate change, low carbon, renewable energy, and 20 updates to environment scrutiny. So there was immense energy going into it there. It dealt with um, the council side of things. They were ahead of their targets there. Um, wonderful things like slurp and beer and beep, which was street lighting um, and uh, building retrofit and uh, business energy. Eco to smart schools, Joanna, um, sort of um, not only helping schools reduce their energy, but um, talking to the children about what was going on, putting it into their curriculum. And um, also they worked at a county level as well. Um, there's been, by 2016, there was a 50% reduction on 1990 and things like mine water heating, district heating, warm home strategy, Freeman's Rich that you associate with our successes now, in fact, happened um, in those early years. In also the links were built up with the DEI, bless them, which is why I'm here now, Bayes, Nella, um, we became experts, as I say we, they became experts at EU funding, which is why instead of the one climate officer that many councils have, we have a staff of 20, and they also got involved in the EU um, partnerships, Rebus, which is about the public buildings, and Low Carbon, which is about businesses. So the first message I have is not very comforting to anybody who might be saying to you, Councillor Claire, how do, how do we develop a, a successful climate change plan? The answer is you need a background of 10 years of absolute genius work going on, building all those um, foundations. Um, and you need a backroom staff, and they were literally in some backroom in the bowels of the organization, like a coiled spring ready to explode. And that opportunity came in February 19, 2019, when a councillor called Stuart Dunn wondered what on earth his children were wittering on about the climate change, decided he needed to find out, went to an Extinction Rebellion meeting and came back and said, we've got to pass a climate emergency motion, guys. Uh, which we did. There was a huge row about whether it ought to be 2030 or 2050. We insisted on 2050. I'm happy to answer questions about that if you want to challenge me. Um, and uh, they gave us a year. And then you notice I'm saying us now, because at that same time, they gave me a fancy title and allowed me the great honor of being the cheerleader for that wonderful team. Um, and they gave us the job of producing a climate emergency response plan within the year. We did it February 2020, a 50 million pound plan, 111 discrete costed actions, the CO2 saving on each one calculated, each one somebody's responsibility. That's just so important that it's somebody's job. And the other thing is the two year plan. If you set your plan for 2050, you'll easy ozy towards it and you won't can't get there on time. We've, what do we need to do in the first two years? These are the thing, things we need to do in the first two years. And then you get your panic towards the end of the two years. And there's gonna be another one from 2023 to 2025. Um, we uh, were asked to do um, uh, a one year catch up on what's going on in February. Um, and despite COVID, um, we've kept to target um, and there are no serious delays. You heard um, yesterday, um, the Louisa Centre mine water heating project has had to be put on hold. That's just not stacking up financially. But against that, we're adding new things in all the time in an eight million pound zero carbon depot um, with its own solar farm and an equipment to have at least a small fleet, uh, our smaller vehicles um, electrified. And the money for 160 EV charge points across the county and two huge woodland um, projects which have brought the number of trees that we've planted since 2009 to more than 1 million. And the awards flood in, um, uh, we were awarded, we, we, it was said that we are one of only 13 um, councils with um, uh, an emergency response plan that passes muster on the food side of things, which when you read what we've put, makes you worry for the rest of the country, quite frankly. But so that was, that we were, the county was declared the UK's greenest city, um, our beep and eco school 
um, projects were praised in two EU conferences. We were invited to take part in an international conference with Tübingen from Germany and Ann Arbor from the USA um, about best practice um, in, in a climate emergency plan. And finally, the icing on the cake at the end of last year, the APSI Awards, we won the best plant initiative of 2020 for our plan. Um, it goes on, we are, um, it's a living document, we're improving it and expanding it all the time. Um, these are the things we're on with at the moment. We are beefing up the section on ad adaptation. We decided it was too much about mitigation. We need to be ready for changes as and when they come. We are beefing up the section on um, a just transition as well. What does that mean? And particularly, what does it mean in practical terms for the inhabitants of County Durham? Too wishy-washy by half. Same goes for the green industrial revolution. Everybody talks about a, a green industrial revolution and we've got to um, uh, take advantage of all those jobs. But when you try to pin them down about what the jobs are, what the industries are, where the industries are, what have we got already? And um, the data doesn't exist and people really just don't know what they're talking about. So we've been to see business Durham and in six months, we're going to have a plan for that as well. My sort of we're embedding di biodiversity into the climate plan as well. And I'd love to talk about that in the questions as well, uh, because are we watering it down or are we um, toughening it up? Um, a really interesting thing there. Um, my main thing has been about embedding um, elections in May. I have a fear I'm not going to get elected. Uh, hopefully I will, but if I'm not, um, I want things embedded in the normal everyday running of the council. So we're not a council that does special um, climate things, but we're just a climate council. Um, and um, so that if I'm not elected, I can face it with a grin and the show must go on, to quote the, the song. Um, it's a massive cabinet commitment. What do you need? You need the senior politicians to be 100% behind it. And this is what we've got. We have a corporate director now of neighbourhoods and climate change at the the top table with his job to bring it in. We have an overset zero carbon board at senior officer level, making our uh, climate policy and making sure it drills down into their departments. And um, we have a climate requirement in every employee's job description. Um, we have a climate change assessment uh, as a required in the implications appendix for every decision. The low carbon team is asked to comment on every relevant planning application um, and we've completely revamped our procurement process to put in a very ambitious social value element which gives us the opportunity to add climate requirements. Things I'm not doing so well on one, divestment is the elephant which will just not move. Carbon budgeting, um, people, uh, departments work with uh, a financial budget without any problem. What they need is a, a carbon budget that, have, that they have to stick to as well. The key is how do we bring that in without overburdening uh, the officers with um, work? And the same goes for monitoring. We are not yet monitoring. That has to happen. Have any of these things that you've been talking about so enthusiastically um, changed at all? What are the bits that I don't know? because we're not monitoring, that has to uh, be brought in. When you come to the um, county as a whole, it's like that film where they climbed the top of the mountain to see uh, what was on the other side, and it was just more mountains. It's just horrific. There's a bewildering array of grassroots bodies and initiatives all going off here, there and everywhere. What is our advice to the individual? We haven't even begun on that yet. There's a massive difference between what we need to do in the Western Dales to the central cities, towns, to the uh, former pit villages of the east. Agriculture is a worry. Transport is a desperate worry. Fuel poverty scares me to death. Retrofitting, I have 57,000 single skin properties. Um, we can um, significantly improve our energy efficiency for 7,000 pounds. Where is that 400 million going to come from? And where are the people with the skills to actually implement it? Community energy, we seem to have neither the ethos nor the expertise. EU funding scares me to death, um, despite promises. And I'm just going to show you these graphs and show you the biggest worry of all. Now, you are you seeing my screen now, Joanna? Yes, John, I am. Thank you. Right. 
This is, was my thinking in March 2019. Um, what we've got is, uh, this is just for the council, but it shows how we were thinking. What we've got there is what we'd managed to bring it down. And these are straight lines where we're projecting forward to see where we might end up. Now, of course, th that increases the percentage uh, decrease you've got to make each year because it's a straight line. And so what you find is, is that when we go, go to February 2020 and look at our SERP, um, can you see that it has this kind of curved shape to, to it? Um, because the steps, of course, get small as you put a percentage increase in each year, decrease in each year, the steps get smaller and smaller. Now, this is the Tyndall Centre projection. And what they, well, this is Manchester University, and what they pointed out was that um, Paris was not about getting there by 2050. What Paris was about was about limiting the temperature rise to 2.5 degrees by accepting a carbon budget for the world. And then what happened is that all the um, different countries said, well, we'll take responsibility for that amount of the budget and we'll get rid of that amount of CO2 emissions. And, and sort of, they, so they came back with a physical number that they had to get rid of. And if you split that down fairly across the country, as the Tyndall Centre has done, you find out that sort of, we are not required just to get there by 2050. We have been given a carbon budget by Paris of 16.6 .6 megatons that we have to shed by 2050. So the Tyndall Centre, they're not bothered about the shape of the curve. That's just the, the, the most convenient way to get there. They're bothered, bothered about the volume of this area here. And that cannot exceed 16.6 .6 megatons. And so if you actually overlay the Tyndall curve on the top of our curve, can you see how our curve is much less aggressive and consequently this area here is an overspend on our carbon budget of 18 percent and what i've got to say to you is that you know in the um country as a whole there are about 450 um uh councils 350 of them have climate emergency plans fewer than a hundred sorry climate emergency declarations fewer than a hundred have got plans we are acknowledged one of the best and we are way behind on meeting our paris obligations and this is um, sort of if you believe that the adam smithian hidden hand of neoliberal market capitalism is going to get us there you are mistaken we've got to do much more than we're doing joanna uh, we're falling way way behind and that's why our climate emergency response plan has a fourth section where it actually i'm aware i've got one minute 57 seconds left sort of um has a section of asks of the government. What are we doing? I'm going to finish on a positive though. What are we doing about the county as a whole? Um, sort of despite all that, we've set up um, a partnership um, structure. We have a climate emergency strategic board. John Gluias of DEI is uh, written large across that. Um, Jim Coquill from Durham uh, Wildlife Trust as well. They're in charge of this. And my golly, what a stellar group of people they pulled together. Um, and the idea of that is that what we'll do is we're going to set up working groups of real experts who will go away and look at those problems I listed for the county. And they'll come back with a set of discrete, costed, achievable actions for Durham County Council and tell us the things that we've got to do, the best we can do to bring that about. And the second thing is... Um, uh, we're going to set up some kind of, um, I'm calling it a citizen scrutiny. I'm sure that's not the proper name. Um, so if, if you want to ask me about what I think about citizens' assemblies, I've got a lot to say about them, but um, I haven't got time. Um, but the, I'm setting up a citizen scrutiny system whereby all those very committed um, groups and individuals can hold us to account and tell us their ideas. So the basic message is, um, what are the council, what's County Durham Council doing? Um, sort of, not enough, not enough, but my golly, it's the best we can do. And it's absolutely full of the enthusiasm that you see in me. And I'm just now, Joanna, going to pad out my final 
eight seconds until I can finish precisely on time. Back to you. Amazing. Thank you so very much indeed, John. That was great.